everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really lovely triple easel card. So I've made the normal circle easel card a few times now. So you just cut a smaller one and then a smaller one again and stick them on top of each other. It's as simple as that. So they basically become the stopper for, for each one. So this one here wedges up against this one and this one wedges up against this one. And then this one, you just add a little stopper at the front there and it all locks in together. And then the very back one there, you just open up and you can write your message or you can write your message on these ones or on the bottom as well. But I think it looks really, really cool. So let me show you how to make it. Okay, so the paper pad that I've used today is the Paper Addicts Tropical Bliss. If you'd watched my What Did I Get video a few weeks ago, I've just fallen in love with this paper pack and already I am, yeah, there's not many left. So it's getting well used. It's just got beautiful images. It's really easy to fussy cut and I just love all the prints and the color. So that's the one I've used today. And as always, I will link everything in the description box below. Okay, so this one is entirely up to you what size you want to do this. So I have got my, I've used the, for the green leaves, I've used the Bright Rose of Fern Border and I've used this one here. I really like it, it's got a nice size to it and I just thought it worked quite well with, you know, this kind of theme. And I did say that these would work really well as seaweed. So if you're doing any kind of underwater, you know, scenes, that would work well. But the circles that I'm using are just my stitched circle dies here. So you wanna choose, so I've just, I've got them in two piles because you cut with one size and then you do your mats and layers with another. So if I put them all back to normal again, just so it kind of makes it a bit more easier for you guys to understand. Like I said, this, this will go for any shape, but it's good if you've got a set of nested dies. So you've got all those different sizes. Alternatively, you can use your circle cutter. You can use your um, the X-Cut circle cutter. You can use the X-Cut cutting system which is the other one that I use a lot with those two big plastic circles and you have the blade that kind of goes around. You can use a plate, a saucer, many, many different you know objects depending on what shape you want to do. That's how my nest of circles are. So the largest one is what I cut my biggest one with. So I'm gonna pop that to one side. Then the next size down is the one that I cut to make my patterned mat to stick on top of that one. Okay, so put that one in one pile, okay? and then that one would be there. Then the next one down is the next card size that I'm gonna cut. Okay, so that'll go with this one here. And then the next size down is the one that I've cut my patterned mat to go on top of that. So that'll go to another pile. And then this one here will be my last and smallest little easel card. And then this is the patterned mat that I've got to go on top of that and then the next one down from that one I've used to cut my tiny little sentiment here okay and this sentiment has come from the card making and paper craft it's their recent issue or well, well it may not be by the time the video goes out but it's the sending love on your birthday and I said I brought I brought the stamp set for these I loved all of these stamps but I also like the font or the different mix of fonts there so sending love on your birthday so that's the one that I've used yeah for both of the cards so I use every single set of my nesting dies here. And these ones, as you can see there, they're from the works. And again, I think they're still available. I'll link them in because they are, well, there's many, many companies that do nesting dies. Okay, so the ones that you want to use for your pattern paper, obviously, you know, go away and choose what you want to use for that. But we're going to focus on the larger ones for cutting the actual cards themselves. So I've got here, this was just A4 cardstock and I just scored a five and uh, seven eighths of an inch right through the middle and folded it in half. Okay, so that's the halfway point because it's, it's like 11 and three quarters ish. So I've done two of those. Now you can use pre-made cards if you want to. So six by six, five by seven, uh, any size depending on the circles you're using. But I didn't want to cut into those. I'd rather just use my cardstock. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab some tape and we need to make those card shapes. Now what you wanna do when you make an easel card is you need to keep it connected. So I'm hanging off my die here slightly over the edge of the folded end, okay? So that's where my fold is. You wanna hang your die over the edge so you've got about one inch connecting. Okay, so from where it just starts to appear on each side, you want that to be about an inch, an inch and a half max. Okay, pop that there. And then I'll probably be able to cut the smaller one out of this side here once I've ran that through my machine because I can now run that through 
sideways I think no I might have to cut that now because it might overhang so I'm just going to trim the excess off and that one there I think yeah I'll be able to cut that one with and then that one I'll cut on the second piece that I've already prepared so with that piece now or in fact we'll do them all and then I can cut them all at the same time so then this one here so you're going to sit over the edge exactly the same way again so just bring it up oh, the smaller they are obviously you don't want an inch and a half because otherwise you'll have too much overhanging but you just want there to be a nice amount to keep the card attached so again I'm just going to grab some tape and just pop that one there and then the last one here is that medium sized one the one that's going to go in the middle and again just flip it over and just make sure you're happy once you see mine open out you'll see what I mean because some of you might be thinking on you know you might not have done this before and I'm not sure what this all means so it will all make sense once they're cut okay so I'm just bringing in my big shot and I always keep some copy paper whenever I'm, I'm working with like white card stock and oh, that was just come off I'll have to do that again in a minute because you don't want to get any kind of print you might have you know you don't know what goes on here sometimes it might just be although it looks clean yeah you don't want to risk it on the white anything white anyway so I just lay some copy paper over the top now you may need to add a few shims you may you know not get a good cut first time it doesn't always cut all the way through because it's cutting through two layers and mine's 300 gsm so but I'll show you in a minute it's easy to kind of help that along okay so I'm just running it through and then back again and I'm just going to get those other ones all cut as well Okay, so just carefully take all this off. Keep the circles because you're going to cut the same circle again on just normal white cardstock. But it would have cut through the first one, and then you'll see here it's just left an impression. But it has on mine, it's pretty much cut through, but it just needs a little bit of help. And all I do is just pop my scissors in, and it will kind of find look, you can see it's just kind of coming apart. You're just almost just snipping through. Look, see what I mean? So it more than likely will cut through but it just needs a little help in hand I'm not really cutting this I'm just it's just like it's almost like there's a, just a tiny few fibers just holding it together I imagine if I maybe put a thicker um, shim in like a metal shim it probably will cut through but yeah you can see and then just join that up there but you do cover this and you don't see a lot anyway so if you do think you've got to cut a bit more than you would like don't worry because it does all get hidden really and yeah so there you go so you can see there that is pretty well it's perfect there's nothing wrong with that so you just want to do that on all of them unless they have cut all the way through some of my dies do cut through both of these layers of cardstock so this is the cardstock I use all the time so um but these again they're from the works but they're made you know probably from China and stuff so the blades on them might not be as deep as normal but you can also use if you keep it folded down you can just use that as your kind of guide but you can see there it does it's just easy it's very I'm cutting hardly anything it feels like I'm cutting tissue paper it's that thin so yeah so just do that on all of them Okay, so now I've got my three card bases. So if I just open it up, you'll see what I mean by having it attached by about an inch, like so. You should have these figures of eight, okay? Then with the same card, or you can use colored card if you want, you wanna cut those three same circles again in each side. So there's, I'm gonna use that scrap to cut that one. I've got this scrap here for that one. And then I've got this piece here. This was actually a five by seven card, but the back of it got a bit grubby. I think I've got some ink on it. So I will use that. And then you just want to get those all cut, okay? Okay, so now you should have your three bases, your small, your medium, and large and then the same single circles as well now we just need to do a little bit of scoring on each of these the figure of eight so just pop those to one side so with your first one so because I've got the stitched I can see which one's the top so this is the top here this is the one you want to score on okay so have them all with the fold at the top 
opening like this, open them up and then pop them in your scoreboard. You just want to find the center, the halfway mark of whatever circle size you're using. Now don't worry if it's slightly off to one side more than the other, it really doesn't matter. So my halfway um, point here, actually I didn't actually say what size circles I'm using. The largest one is four and a half diameter. Okay, it's just coming in here. I'll put a little note up at the beginning as well, just so you see, but yeah, four and a half. So I want two and a quarter. Okay, and you're just going to score right through the middle. So you want to score parallel to the fold line there. So that's that one. You're going to do that on each one. So again, there's the top, this one here. Pop it in. And this circle here. You want to make sure that this score line is straight with the with your tracks of your scoreboard, and that way you know you're going to get your line straight. So this one's three and a half, so you're looking at one and three quarters ish. Like I said, it's not an exact, it doesn't, but it's close to. And then this little one here is just under two and a half. So one and a quarter, just about, I think that'll be all right. There we go. Okay, so then with your folded piece, you just want to carefully fold and burnish. So you can see there, mine's nearly half but it doesn't matter, you want it to be as close as possible. That one, yeah, the others are okay actually. So now you will have these three easel cards, like this. And then these circles are going to stick on the bottom half of the fronts of each one. So that one's gonna stick like that. This one is gonna stick like that. And then this one you got it, we'll stick like that. So you want to add glue to the half moon part of each of your little easel cards there, okay? So okay, so now you should have three little cards like this. Next you want to decorate them, and I've just realised I didn't cut enough circles because I've got one there, but you also want to cover this side as well. So you'll need a pattern paper for the front and also for the inside of each one. So I've got that one there, so I need to do the same there. I think I'm going to reverse them all, and then I've got that one there. So I think I'll have the pattern on the bottom. So I'm just going to get them all stuck down and cut my other ones as well. Okay, so I've stuck all of my mats down there. I think they look really cool. I love these colours together. So now it's up to you how you want to stick these because you can have them far out like this. So see, that's much, much longer. If I bring mine in, you can see here, I've got mine quite close together, partly because I wanted to keep it small so it fits in my envelope. But can you see the difference in length? So you can come out really long if you want to, depending on how you want to decorate it. But I've kind of, it's hard for me to really kind of tell you, but you can see how far in I'm bringing my circles. So more than three quarters of the way I'm sticking this circle into this circle. And then again, that one there. So the whole length of mine, if I tell you the whole length of mine, then you can kind of, you know, if you want to, you know, stick to a close, as close to my size as possible. Bearing in mind, you want to get it in a six by six envelope. So that comes in, yeah, I'm coming in at five and three quarters, okay. And obviously the width is the four and a half that I use for the circle. So the width can kind of, you can extend the width with how you decorate. So mine might come out a little bit wider with that one because of the detail and the, the foliage that I've used there. But that's how I'm going to kind of keep mine. So just under six inches coming out, but you can come out longer. But then you'll just have to make a different envelope. So with this, with the glue, I can see my circle underneath here is kind of, kind of there. So I'm going to just kind of pinch where my finger is so I know I need to glue that area so again it's hard for me to kind of explain those things you just kind of have to use your judgment and um, yeah this glue you can rub it off if anything oozes out so it's quite a good one for that and then again you want to make sure you keep everything straight so you want your your fold this folded piece see mine's crooked so I'm just going to turn it so it runs exactly the same these two here so just make sure that they stay straight and then again just bring it in and it will wedge against that it will kind of find where it kind of you know catches on that one underneath so that's those ones and then this one here with this one again I can kind of just about see because they start to all lock in with each other so again
and you can fold everything flat and push it all down and can you see the shape of mine so again if I bring this one down you can see that I've got them pretty much the same so that's the kind of look you want to look for this one's probably coming out the middle one's coming out a bit more than that one but it really doesn't matter so now it's the fun part for me always is the decoration so the hard work is done because it's just preparing all of this. What I would say is if you get your stopper at the front, actually what I'm gonna do, because I haven't done it yet, is just burnish all of those back score lines and these folds here, I didn't burnish any of them, that's why it's a little bit bouncy, so just, um, I can't really do that. If you can burnish them before, then do so. Just wanna make sure that gets a nice crease there. And that one I can kind of get underneath, like so. Yeah, now they they stand up much, much better. There we go, you don't get that bounce. That one's standing up without even the stopper on it. So yeah, you need something. So I'm gonna use the same little, I think, water lily there. And then I've gone ahead and cut all these pieces. So I've got my dragonfly, I've got all this greenery here that I cut with that dye that I showed you. And I've done them in another color as well just for the other side, and I've got that. So I'm gonna stick my stopper down first because then it keeps everything together. And I've got my other dragonfly there as well, but I'll speed, um, put this all on high speed and then show you when it's finished. Okay guys, so there is my finished card. And then I have these, which I forgot to share in one of my what did I get videos, because I picked these up from the works. It was two pound for a bag, and the bag has filled up this. And basically it's all of your kind of embellishments that come on your, you know, your sticky ones, but they haven't got the, the adhesive on the back. So I think these are just what maybe are left over in factories sometimes because there is a mix of all sorts. There are some random things in there, like for example, there's one black faceted kind of rhinestone there. There's hearts, there's all sorts, but they are perfect. You get a lot of companies selling these. I could go and sort them out. Like you can see there's clear ones there and so on. But for two pound, I thought I'm gonna buy that because there are so many lovely colors. So I'm gonna pull out these nice kind of goldy colored ones and it's just you can see here where I've added them in just kind of randomly it just adds a little bit of shine and sparkle there's one there as well and um, I've got my little pickup tool which I've been using comes in really handy this is by Dovecraft again I'll link it in and you just dab the glue imagining that's where you're going to put them and then I'm just going to bring in that one pop that there and then some of these little ones and it just, yeah, just adds a little bit of sparkle. And then I'll pop a couple on here. So again, just put the glue where you want them to go. Always kind of working in threes, odd numbers are always good. And again, I'm gonna pop that one there. So you get all kinds of colors. You can't guarantee what you're gonna get, but there's pretty much something for, yeah, any. I think that's it. I didn't put any on the bottom on the other one, so I'll leave it at that. Okay, so if I just bring this one up now, can you see, just with those little bits of sparkle, it's hard for me to hold up without it all obviously collapsing because it rests on each other, but it's just a gorgeous card, absolutely love this. So that's that one, and again, I'll bring this one up so you can see it a bit closer. I just love the dragonflies. I said when I looked at the papers, I said, oh, I love them. And also, if you do want to stamp beforehand on that section, then do it before you put everything together but um, I think they look absolutely fantastic. So I hope you agree, hope you like them, hope you give it a go. If you do, please share them over on Mixed Up Crafters Facebook group, as loads of you already do. And uh, yeah, hope you've enjoyed the tutorial guys. Give me a thumbs up if you have and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching, bye.